so the, this must be a, a pretty special one for you. Just to uh, understand, it's a bit of a monumental time for, for you and your family right now. You've yes, got your citizenship. Is that right? Tell us about that. Yes, sir. A bit about that. Yes, sir. We all we got our citizenship um a couple of weeks back, and I we didn't really get to celebrate. I was ready to start filing. As soon as we got our citizenship, I was like, all right, it's time for me to start filing for my brothers and sisters to try to get them over here. But my mom was like, hey, relax, relax, man. Go take care of your fight first. Because as soon as we left the, the citizenship place, we took our vows, they gave us our new passports and stuff like that. I had to go straight back to practice, you know? But I was so eager to start filing for my brothers and sisters. My mom was like, go get the win first, you know? After the fight, then we could celebrate the citizenship, celebrate your fight, and then we'll start filing for your brothers and sisters. So that's the next step now. Hopefully, that goes as smoothly as our citizenship went. Was it something that you had to sort of try and try to keep a lid on that excitement and get back to? The that, job yes, yeah, exactly. Fight well? Yeah, and you, um, I don't know how many of you've been following my career. You know, it, it means a whole lot to me. So the fact that when it happened, you know, I, it was really hard for me to um, focus. You know, because it's like. It's like, man, I, can't, I don't want them to wait any longer. I don't want them to wait any longer. Because no matter what, the, the, the process to bring them over here is going to take a while. But I guess the three weeks that <laughs> I had to prepare for my fight, I'm going to say, you can wait, you can wait. Yeah, I was, when they said, um, 29, 28, when they said the two rounds on all judges' scorecards, I knew it was me for sure. Definitely. This time next year, I see my name. The same process I've been having since the Contender Series, I see this thing going on and on and on. You know, I'm 26 years old. I'm only getting better. You guys are only starting to see the other aspects of my game. Before this fight, everybody just thought I was a striker. You know, they didn't think I had any jujitsu. And I feel like that's one of the things that really caught Andre by surprise. Because I heard him say this was going to be his most dominant win. I figured he thought he was just going to be able to take me down, wrestle, and hold me there. But I do have a lot of grappling, too. And like I said, I'm 26. I'm only getting better. And I'm getting more comfortable with being in this cage. I'm getting more comfortable with doing all these guys, all these things with you guys and the way fight week goes. So just expect nothing less than what you've seen. Only expect better from here on. And in terms of his skill set, a month ago, Max Holloway said that all the fighters I heard that. Really I heard so that. <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. He does. I'll, I'll say this. He 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 did hit more more accurately than most of my past opponents. You know, I see he was placing the shots because there's a lot of time when you're fighting and like punches. Other fighters will understand what I'm trying to say, but the punches will hit you in like weird spots where it's not really doing much. But each one of Andre's shots was landing in a solid position. It will hit me solidly in my eye, temple, and the back of the head, and every single time it was in a good spot. So I will give him that. Okay, uh, yeah, I was confident that I was ahead in the third round, but I was also having a little bit of problem. Uh, I don't know how much I could give away, but I had a little bit of um, problems that I ran into in that third round, so I, I had to play it a little bit safer. Was this the hardest fight you've had yet? Uh, believe it or not, the hardest fight of my career was my second ever amateur fight. Fighting is a lot harder when you have no idea what you're doing, and it's just, <laughs> and it's just, and it's just two guys out there throwing, throwing to the wind. It was only nine minutes, but like I said, I had no idea what I was doing. That was the hardest fight I've ever had in my career. Last week, I know you've wanted a higher rank opponent. You feel you merit a top ten opponent coming up next? Is there any way that right? Uh. I don't, there's no one I really have my eyes on right now. Right now is kind of just um, enjoy his victory, heal up, and go talk to my coaches and see what they what they got planned up next. But I'm sure I should be ranked higher than 15 right now, so it will make sense. It wouldn't make sense for me to go lower. Last week, what was the most important coaching advice you got from Coach Irvin today? today um, it, the most important coaching advice actually didn't come from um, Lloyd Irvin. It came from my coach Jamal Hargrove. And he told me to, there was a point in that fight where I started looking for my kicks. And I, I kicked and I got countered, kicked again, got countered. And he said, hey, stop kicking, stop kicking. I chose to ignore him, kicked again, got countered one more time. <laughs> and then he yelled out. And I could tell when he gets angry because he, I could tell when his voice, from the way his voice sounds. And when he said it the, the fourth time, it finally clicked. And I was like, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So that was the most important advice I got today. Uh, at your last fight, you talked about talking to your mom backstage before the fight. Yes. What, did, what was her message to 
Yes. So tonight it was just um, prayers. She told me my brother's watching over me, and she said everybody back home is watching and they're all praying. You know, it's it should be around maybe three o'clock in Nigeria right now, three in the morning, two three o'clock, and all my brothers and sisters back home are all watching and they're all praying for me too. And that's what she wanted to tell me. I saw her. I wish I could bring her downstairs um, after the fights, you know, but, but she was a little bit higher up. My brother was a little bit closer, you know, just to give her a big, big old hug, you know, but that's my mom's greatest superpower is those oils and prayers that she got, you know, saying she, she's always showering me in them. If you, if, it doesn't matter if you're religious or you're not, just being around that positive vibe and that positive energy, it does a lot for an athlete's career, especially in a sport like this where so much of it is mental. All the physical stuff is done in practice. Everything else is just mental. So so just being around that positivity changes a lot. Uh, two fights ago, no, three fights ago, one of my teammates got sick and um, my coach told me, hey, get out of the fighter house because that's where I, I stay at the fighter house 24 seven the whole year. And he was like, hey, get out the fighter house. I don't want you to get sick before your fight. So I went to go stay with my mom. I haven't lived with my mom since I was like in high school. So I went to go stay over there and every morning she'll wake me up with a bunch of oils and, and prayers and stuff like that. The first night it kind of freaked me out because I, like, I was like, whoa, what the heck is this? But after a while I started, I, I liked it, you know? And since then I purposely go over there two weeks before my fight and just sit, sit up, sleep on her couch, you know? Just because of that positive energy and that positive vibes. Like I said, it might sound silly to some people, but that energy goes a long way. And how's her training going? Her training is like, she's going, she's doing very well. She, she lost a good like 20, 20, 30 pounds since, since she started, you know? And it's one of those things that's, I, I say that's one of the most, my proudest accomplishments is getting her in the gym, you know? I don't want her, I, one day she, she called me up, she was like, man, do, do, would they let people my age fight? I was like, man, I, man, I was like, if you don't cut this out, man, I made sure I called my striking coach right away. I was like, if I see my mom doing any kind of sparring, man, man, you're gonna have problems. I don't, I don't want her doing any type of fights, you know. But she's happy. She loves it, as you can tell. She's asking about getting in a sparring session and taking fights. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yes, 100%. We're hearing a lot of rumblings and people are talking about it. I feel like the UFC is making moves towards that, that direction. Every time I go back home to Nigeria, there's always an MMA event on TV and it's on constant rotation, you know, because South Africa hosts a lot of MMA fights. So it's, I think it's just a matter of time. I don't know the, um, like the logistics behind it. I'm sure it's something that the UFC is trying to figure out right now, but it seems like a no-brainer for UFC Africa to happen with, like you said, two champions, Francis, me, the KC, um, Akeem, there's a whole lot of people that we could put on that car to show out, man. The UFC Africa, I think it's going to happen this year for sure. Well, particularly Nigeria, right? Like, yeah, especially, as, especially Nigerians, you know. The yeah, the thing is, um, it, especially for our country, but I like to um, spread spread the love out, you know. A lot of people say if we could fix Nigeria, we could fix all of Africa. So I like to spread the love out, man. So it's not it's not just Nigeria. UFC Africa will be appreciated no matter what country you guys host it on. Is that it? Congratulations.